Hello, and welcome to part three of a noob's attempt at doing cabinet restoration. There is uh, going to be a great outcry, I'm sure. <laughs> I am self-confessed here. I don't have a clue, but I am doing my best. We have veneer. I've got this stuff here. I have enough of this to do this three times. So if I screw this up on the first go around, I can do two more attempts. And then I'll just go out and shoot myself. Um, I wanted to use contact cement to put this on. However, I would have had to buy I would have had to have purchased a 4x8 sheet at over a hundred dollars and I've already spent more money on this radio than it has any right to expect. I am <laughs> I'm into this thing now for close to probably four hundred and fifty dollars and uh, you know I could never expect to sell this thing for probably for more than fifty when it's finished. I had to go out and buy a scroll saw uh, I bought a scroll saw so that I could make some molds so when I go to make the window for the dial, uh, the lens, the window, whatever you want to call it, I had to cut out the uh, the molds to do that. That'll be another video all in, all by itself when the time comes. What I'm at here now is I've got to use a pressure sensitive adhesive backing. There is only five eighths of an inch of flat here. So when I go around this corner, it's of course going to want to try to lift. This side should be okay because there's plenty of surface area for it to attach to. But I am just terrified that this side's going to lift. It's going to peel back off because there's just no surface area here. So I've come up with a plan, and I know this is going to leave the woodworking guys chuckling. I've made up a pressure pad. This is some very heavy, dense foam. Is this thing recording? Yeah, okay. Just making sure. That wouldn't be the first time. With a plywood backer, that's going to go on here. Then these are going on top, and this is going on top of that. <clears throat> and then up here, we have this guy. And out here on the end of this thing, I'm going to hang that bucket full of tools, which weighs 31 pounds or about 14 kilos. That's going to sit out here on the end of this to compress that down and I'm just going to let it sit for a couple of days and let the adhesive really take hold. Now I'm sure everybody's wondering what's the stack of lumber on the top for. That's so when the pressure is here this allows it to articulate and apply even pressure on both sides. These will articulate this way if there's any twist in the cabinet I should hopefully get some fairly even pressure on the front of that and I'm just going to let it sit for a while. For the ends, I've already put an additional bolster plate on the inside temporarily. It's just taped in there. And I have some thinner foam which is fairly dense. That's going to get clamped very tightly on both sides to hold the sides down and that should make up for any surface defects. It should allow it to press the veneer down and I'm just gonna let it sit for a while and it's gonna be hard for me because I am not a patient man I want to see it finished but I am going to have to struggle and just let it go and let that adhesive set up before I do anything else so that's where it stands right now now I'm gonna cut the um, veneer to fit this is 27 inches all the way around. 
I bought a strip 24 by 96 so I can get three length three of the uh, 27s out of it and there's enough width to do the cabinet and the top in each section so like again like I say I can do this three times if I screw it up it's up on blocks so that I can get my clamps up underneath and again I haven't got a clue what I'm doing probably doing it wrong but I'm doing it my way and we'll see what happens in the end so let me get the veneer cut and get that process okay, started. We have the veneer on for what it's worth and if you need any more proof that I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing as if more proof is needed. When I purchased the veneer I purchased it online and they had bare wood or bare veneer then in the self-adhesive column they had self-adhesive paper backed I my mind immediately went to paper backed meant that it was self adhesive you peel the paper off well I know the woodworkers are laughing right now because paper backed just means that it's paper backed I had to go look it up online because I couldn't figure out how to peel the paper off the back it's permanently bonded fortunately I had some uh, 3m I think it's 77 uh, automotive trim adhesive and a spray can so I sprayed the cabinet and I sprayed the back of the paper and anybody who's worked with that stuff knows it's pretty damned aggressive um, it's quite an adhesive I hope I got the radius is good and tight I did my best it's all clamped up and we're going to give it a couple days so the wood can learn its or get used to its new curve here before we take the top or the weights off of this thing. I've got my uh, weight hanging over here and my clamps up against my blocks everything's good and tight and I'm just going to let it sit for a day or two. I've got several other projects going on right now. I've got a finish up that car radio for Thomas and I've got two uh, different sets I've got the uh, General Electric model 250 and an Emerson oh what the heck model is that 505 I think it is uh, the 505 is the one that I did in nerds corner that is powering the filaments or the heaters from the uh, cathode uh, bias resistor and the output tube We've got uh, actually two of those. I ordered two of them so I'd have spares. And the GE Model 250, I ordered two of those just so I'd have parts if I needed them. And uh, I've got that stuff on my bench as well to deal with. So <clears throat> This will sit for a couple of days until I'm pretty confident that the wood has learned that new curve. Then I'll take that off, trim the edges up and bond the top on and then get on with making a mess of the uh, staining <laughs> another area where I am clueless but uh, we're gonna muddle through this I certainly can't make this cabinet look any worse than it was when I got it so when you see this uh, it'll be a blink of the eye for you it'll be a couple of days for me okay I went to bed last night this was looking good. This sat here all day yesterday and was absolutely fine. I checked it before I went upstairs last night. It was fine. I came down here this morning and it split open all along the bend. <clears throat> that is really disheartening. I am going to come around the other side here. And we've pretty much got the same condition in here. That's split open. So now I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to probably think I'm going to leave this on. I think I'm going to trim it on the edges. I'm going to sand it down. I'm going to let it sit for another day just to make sure the adhesive is taken hold. I think I'll sand this down and put another layer on top of it. This 
the double layer will help stiffen up the front where all the cracks are. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just a little bit beside myself today. I just wasn't expecting that. It was absolutely fine last night. And I thought I was on, I thought I was home free. I guess I can try steaming it next time before, you know, I'll stick it down on the top and then steam it as I bend it. Although I did read that steaming it causes expansion and when it dries out it'll contract and that can cause problems. I just don't know. I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a woodworker. So I'm going to put this out there as is. Um, tell me what you think about leaving the double layer for you know strength and stability in the front of the cabinet. And uh, the woodworkers out there, if you've got any ideas on what to do about uh, getting around that bend without fracturing. I'm the radio mechanic. Made a mess of this one. See you soon. Bye.